Thank you for sharing us with your time today. Uh, what's your name and your title? Uh, my name is Alonzo Elam. I'm with the Minneapolis Mad Dads. I'm actually a supervisor, a youth coordinator, and I facilitate a couple of groups for uh, youth at risk youth in the community. What do you think about violence in the North Side? It's, it's terrible. There's too much going on. Um, not enough jobs, not enough resources for the people, for the young kids especially. Nowhere really for them to go to hang out, uh, vent, you know, allow some of the added stress of life, you know, to be a, some people go play sports, but if you don't like sports, there's really nothing for you to do in the community except hang out. And usually that's when a lot of them get in trouble. And then once, once a situation happens, it escalates from um, one side of North Minneapolis to the other. So there's two different gangs and there, well, it's not two different gangs, it's like 30 different cliques in, in North Minneapolis that hang out around here. Um, and it's just a lot of young men who really don't have anything to do and they were influenced by the you know, music, uh, social media, things like that. And it's just, you know, once we, you know, get involved with them, show them that we care, that's what Mad Dad does. We get involved with them, show them that we care, and just, you know, stay close to them as best as possible to just let them know that, you know, there is somebody out here who care, there is a way out, you know, but um, out of the gangs, away from the drugs, you know what I mean? It's not about, um, a lot of people talk about getting out of the community. It's not that. It's the things that's going in on inside the community, you know, and it's up to us to come together to change some of these things. That way the community gets better. People want to stick around. People want to live here. You know, you can't you can't run away from from a lot of things, especially what's going on in the world today. It's basically everywhere. There's there's a hood everywhere, you know. So once you change what's going on within your community, then you know, change yourself, then things will get better. Okay, and uh what is one thing you could do to help prevent violence? Right? What is one thing you can uh, help to do or you can commit to do to, to help prevent violence on the north side? Sticking and staying. Staying around, getting involved with some of the programs and the things that's going on inside the community. Actually, there's a lot of great programs in this community. And it's a lot of help, just church, mad dads, uh, app appetite for change. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of things going on in the community. You just got to get involved. You know, you got to ask for help. That's one of the, uh, the pride kick in. and. A lot of these people don't want want to ask for help. You ask, it's out here. It's, it's out here for you. It's just they just gotta humble themselves and ask. Yeah, thank you for your time today. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you for your time today. Uh, can you give us your name and title? My name is Diamond. My title is Minneapolis Mad Dads. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about violence on the north side? I think that it's getting better. Cause when I um, I'm from St. Paul, so when I heard about Northside, I always heard about I always heard about the uh, Northside and how bad it was, and it made me not want to come around. But now that I work in the neighborhood and um, help out, I'm, as I see with Minneapolis Mendez and other places, is trying to help get it better. And um, it, it's not as bad as I thought it was. I thought it was horrible. And that I live over here is bad, but it's getting better. Okay. And uh, what is one thing you could do to help and commit, uh, to commit and help uh, with violence in the North Side? Well, just pretty much promote that, you know, gun violence is not good. You know, it's um, kids is our future. The youth is our future. We are the future. Um, it's us that's dying, so I feel like um, what I can do pretty much is keep on doing what I'm doing now is feeding people, showing, helping um, my community, talking to the people, and you know, just try to pretty much get people to understand that you know we gotta clean up our community. We don't want it to be bad. We don't want people out in the streets doing this, young kids and people dying no more. So doing what I'm doing now just helping out the community and make it better. Okay. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your time today. Uh, can you tell us your name and title? Um, Jerry Hill. Um, work, always working for the Minneapolis Mad Dads. So we always the community. We help help people find job resources, housing resources. We do community events such as what we just did, barbecue. Um, 
do all sorts of stop the violence rallies. We go door to door knocking and ask people, you know, you know, what do they, what, what can you do? What do you think that that would help better help the north side? It would better help the community. You know, we ask people. We got various responses, you know, such as this one I like to believe in. You know, more more activities for the youth, such as you know, more community events, such as more open gyms and stuff. Um, something like a, 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 a teen, a young adult club, teen club. I mean, I lived in, um, when I used to stay in Maple Grove, they had um, a place called the Teen Center. Where we, and they had special events there where they'd have a, um, a lock-in, which we also do. And it's a lock-in where we just you know, do something. We have fun with the kids. We talk to them. We play games, video games, go play basketball. You know, doing something like that, you know, let the kids come together and, and, and show them it's a better, positive way to uh, handle things, you know. Sit down, talk to them, empower them, and teach them. Um, basically, there's a better way than, you know, instead of going out and going to hurt somebody, maybe you just, you know, either rather just talk or two. Talk or talk through it. You know, if they got a problem with you over what, see what's up. Like, you know, ask them like, what's going on. Like, if it's if it's, it could be a misunderstanding. And that's a lot of youth violence is actually over misunderstandings. I don't even know why why they mad at that person or they, why they getting at that person just off another person say, and half the time some half, more than half the time because I know I used to be like that, I get in trouble. It ain't me. It ain't even because of what that person did to me. They ain't did nothing to me. I really don't know that person very well, or they may have said something. And that's the thing. Social media is a good way to connect, but it's also a bad way, you know, because they get on social media, they get to saying all they. Being basically what I like to say, you no know, internet, internet bullies, internet thugs, and that always leads bad, and people want to fight and kill over, it, and it's not even that necessary, you know. But I just feel like for the youth, we just gotta have, get them together, and talk to them. That's it. Talk to them. Let them have fun activities. Do, uh, lock community lock-ins. So let them go ahead, run around, hang out. Get to you know if they know if they would have once had beef, get to let, let them get to know with one another. Maybe they got something in common, and that's what they you know. I think the youth need to figure out what they got in common, because and more often now they got more in common than they, than they than they don't have in common. You know, it's so all I feel like just need to talk to one another and, and figure out what's going on. To get to know each other, hey, it's a beautiful thing. You become make you make you make uh, you make uh, enemies to your friends. That's how we used to do it. Of course, we didn't, we didn't really, we fought, but afterwards we shook hands. All right, I mean, we, we cool now. We ain't got no problems. All right, next question. Okay, uh, what do you think about violence in the north side? Um, I really, I think a lot of violence in the north side is, uh, a lot of it really stems from, it's not, it's not just gangs, drugs. Um, a lot of violence stems from, you know, home, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, a lot of kids don't, they ain't get, some of them may, may not be getting that support they get from home, so they go turn somewhere else, and they, they turn to a bad source, which which leads to a lot of violence. You know, if they, you know, I feel like uh, if they had more uh, more love, more people to, you know, reach out to them and, and, and you know, talk to them, and find out what's going on in their life, you know, so when they show love, maybe that'll help change the violence. I mean, it's, it's entirely too much violence. And I grew up in an era where there was a lot of violence and stuff. I've seen a lot of things, so, and it's just like progressively it's getting worse and it really shouldn't be getting worse, it should be getting better. That's how I feel. All right. yeah. uh, what is one thing you could do or commit to to help with violence in the North Side? Um, do what I always do, come out here and um, engage with the community, talk to them. Um, you know if they have any problems, stop any trouble from happening, man. Just that's all I need somebody to be there, talk them, talk to them. That's that's what I do. It's, it's part of my job description. I love doing it. Just talk to them like it's a better way, man. It ain't worth it. Is it really worth going to jail over? Is it really worth all of this? Because at the end of the day, it's your future. You no, know, that's that's what I, I always want to always tell them like, man, it's the future that you got at stake, man. Is it worth the risk for another person? Is another person make you that mad? That you really gonna risk your entire future because of some. Something he did, and it wasn't even bad enough for you to do it. He may have, dis yeah, he may have disrespected you, but at the end of the day, it's just words. It's just words. You know, and, and words without action is meaningless. Let them talk to they blue in the face and walk it off.
they'll say what they want to say and they can't stop them. So go ahead and let them say it. There's no point in resorting to violence over something so simple as the words. Okay. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have a good day. Okay, uh, thank you for your time today, sir. Uh, can you tell us your name and title? My name and title. My name is John Turnipseed. My title is Executive Vice President at Urban Ventures and Campus Pastor. Okay. Uh, what can you tell us about violence on the north side? Violence on the north of Minneapolis um, is sort of an accepted way of living now. Um, we've accepted uh, people coming into our community and hurting other people. And the reason I say we've accepted it is because we continuously have conversations, but we won't do what's necessary to stop it. Okay, and uh, what is one thing you could commit to to prevent violence in the north side? Well, me, myself, personally, you know, I um, try to help people get out of the lifestyle of violence and, and things of that nature. Um, since I don't necessarily live in North Minneapolis, it's sort of hard for me to take a stand on my block but I always talk against violence. And the only way you're gonna uh, end violence in North Minneapolis is to take Minneapolis back. We have to take North Minneapolis back. We sort of did something similar over in South Minneapolis. Um, violence seems to consume a community and take territory. That's why you see graffiti and all that kind of stuff and people living uh, just out in the open, just violence out in the open and stuff. We have to take our community back and have to let people know that it's just not tolerated here. It's, that, it's really that simple. Violence, we don't have the same problem in Edina. We don't have the same problem in Eden Prairie because they don't allow it there. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for your time today, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you for your time today. Can you tell us your names and titles? K.G. Wilson, spokesman and outreach coordinator for Face to Face in Minnesota. Antoine Beek, senior uh, founder and CEO of Face to Face Minnesota. Uh, what can you tell us about violence in the north side? <laughs> what, what can we do? It's, it's, it's out of control. Um, and there's uh, too much um, violence, uh, especially when it comes to gun violence um, in uh, primarily the north side of Minneapolis, even though that affects the whole city of Minneapolis. And there is a ton of um, money. There are a ton of resources. However, these resources uh, and these monies are not being distributed accordingly. So therefore, we keep having the same result, um, which is um, a lot of gun violence. You know, people getting shot uh, on a daily basis throughout the city, again, with a primary focus right here in the urban areas. Um, that's what I can kind of tell you about it. Also, uh, as 15 years as a uh, peace activist here and dealing with the violence and the homicides and the gangs and the shootings, uh, it has continued. I have not seen it uh, slow down or getting, getting better. Um, still, there's so many uh, families who have been left uh, without closure, uh, uh, their loved ones have been shot down and killed and no one has been arrested or, 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 or um, brought to justice uh, at any time as such. Uh, my president here, as he told you and didn't speak about, actually just had an, an auntie who was murdered in North Minneapolis last year, right? Yeah, in 2016. Right. And so uh, um, he definitely personally has uh, that that pain inside of him. Um, I had a son who was shot right next door at the restaurant, right next door in the neck. Uh, I've had uh, one cousin that was killed. I had uh, uh, two nep nephews that were shot here. And uh, like I said, um, it continues to go on. Um, there's been shootings after shootings at the school where I do groups at um, weekly. Uh, there was two, the last two homicides that just took place were two of my students that were in my group. Uh, we continue to see violence happening. Not maybe a month ago, there was a young lady who was shot and killed in a car and pushed out into the streets and left there dead uh, a few blocks from here. So, I mean, it is constantly uh, just violence from one day to another. Uh, just talking with a mother yesterday who called me yesterday and. Uh, who was still grieving from the, the, the loss of the homicide of her three-year-old child who was shot uh, in the head. 
uh, some time ago, still no closure to it. So we will continue seeing the violence. We'll continue seeing our young people uh, angry. We'll continue seeing our young people not being able to be taught and educated how to deal with their grieving and how to deal with the trauma. Uh, groups like, like I said, like ourselves, face-to-face -face who deal with grief and trauma are not being reached out to, I think, the way they should be. Uh, other groups that are similar to us are not being reached out. They're not being funded. Uh, this takes work. Uh, it takes time. It takes dedication. And, uh, and right now, I'm just not seeing uh, what needs to be done in the community right now, like 911. Absolutely. Okay, uh, one last question. Uh, what is one thing you could commit to to help with violence in the north side? Well, um, in the 15 years, this makes my 15 years, okay, because I came out, or I had retired last year. I felt like I put in enough time. Uh, I was going to focus on doing some other things, maybe kind of behind closed doors. But like you said, when something is in your heart and you have the dedication and determination and discipline, and the love and compassion to help your people and to try to see if you can be a part of, uh, of the solution, maybe a new solution. Maybe this might be the year that face-to-face is uh, the organization or the group that comes together with maybe some other organizations like us that can bring that change. You know, if we have to start block by block, uh, community by community, uh, city by city, but you know, just having it in our heart, and you have to have this in your heart. And when you have, once you have it in your heart, it's kind of hard not to want to be concerned. You know, not to be one of those that are what we call boots on the ground, uh, uh, on the scene individuals that uh, uh, that show compassion. And our community knows who's who in the community, because like I said, after 15 years, people know. After him being 15 years on the fourth, they know that we're two people that. Like other people, not saying there's not, but us because we're in this interview, two people who have put their life on the line for this many years and we continue to come back. We could have packed up and moved out of town, but we're still here. We're still saying, OK, we're going to try a new solution. You know what I mean? And so together, you know what I mean? Um, we could pack a, a strong blow. So that's that unity piece. You could pack a strong blow when we're like this, not unified. That blow is not as strong. And then plus, things can get through it. You yeah. feel me? So this is what it's going to have to take. That unity coming together. Uh, organizations, uh, churches, mosques, um, uh, different groups, communities, neighbors, all coming together, man, to, to bring a solution to a problem that has existed for far too long. And if it does not, um, we bring that solution, it does not get this thing dealt with as soon as possible, we're gonna see more body bags than diplomas. And, and just to kind of further piggyback on that, when you're talking about um, uh, what have we done or what will we do or what can we do to stay committed, um, uh, like you know, Brother KG just stated, you know, individuals in this city, they know who's committed, they know who's not committed, they know by me being born and raised, and I've been here 49 years. I've spent, you know, 15 years on the city of Minneapolis Police Department. Mm -hmm. You know, I built a nonprofit organization, you know, attempting to help, you know, this city, you know, stay safe and reduce crime and reduce violence. Uh, again, um, if we are not being asked to participate in certain things that we should be. I mean, because honestly, who better, you know, to be uh, part of the systemic issues and, and these resolutions than someone that has born, been born and raised here, that has raised six kids here, mm -hmm. that has six grandchildren here, you know, that has been on the department for 15 years and that is still now here in the community with a nonprofit organization that has first-hand knowledge you know of what it's going to take uh, like brother KG said I've had multiple victims uh, family members be victims of gun violence in this community in this city you know so it kind of baffles me to a certain degree that 
uh, individuals do not reach out to me. But see, here's the key. And if we're, if we're going to keep it real, the thing is, is that certain people receive certain resources, certain money for certain reasons. And I don't know, and I really don't care what those reasons are, you know, because that's the deal or whatever it is that they've made with whomever it is. I'm more concerned is, again, if we don't do this together, regardless of who's getting the money, huh? I don't care about the money. If we do not do this together, again, parents, students, or youth, police, city council, the, the city attorney, you know, uh, all of these entities that's in this community, if we don't do this together, we're going to continue to see the same results. And we cannot continue to have uh, interviews. We cannot continue to have, you know, town hall meetings like this. You know, um, like they said, we have a $2.6 billion budget in the city of Minneapolis. Okay. Why is it for the past 25 years we've been having the same results? You know why? It's because we're doing exactly what we're doing now talking about it talking about it and no one really wants to do what needs to be done you know to bring results right and that's coming together the north side of minneapolis has the most non i mean ha has the most non-profit organizations you know uh in the state of minnesota throughout the whole state in this small north side of minneapolis we have well over 200 and something odd nonprofit organizations and the vast majority of us is doing same or similar type of stuff but yet we can't come together for whatever reason and until we have some type of solid profound productive plan that's going to be outreached at least five years in advance not just for the next three months or the next six months or just trying to get through the summer and no this has to be at least a five-year plan and it has to be ongoing in order for us to really truly be able to have some type of resolutions or or, or yeah just resolutions to the systemic issues i mean and there's there's a whole bunch of other things that you know we could you know talk about or tap into or you know discuss or whatever the case may be and, and maybe that's for a different interview um but again when we're talking about you know gun violence in north minneapolis uh, we have the money we have the knowledge we have the resources and all of the other things that um that that needs to take place to bring down you know uh, um these issues and concerns um but we're just not seeing that happen unfortunately okay uh, thank you for your time today thank you uh can you tell us your name and title my name is Lisa Clemens. I'm an activist in Minneapolis and Brooklyn Park. Uh, what can you tell us about violence in Northside? I think it's out of hand, it's out of control, and I don't think it's being addressed um, on the level that it should be addressed. And uh, what is one thing you could commit to to help with violence in Northside? I can commit to bringing African American mothers out to help address the issue. That's the one group that's never tapped um, to be part of a change in the gun violence, even though we're 75 to 85% single parent households of African American mothers, that's the one group that's never utilized. And last question, what is one thing you can recommend others uh, to do um, you know, in the community that, that may help contribute to this also, anything you see? They have to come out and get involved. You can't just talk about it on social media. You have to come back out and take your community back. And I think the police has to stop coddling criminals and, and leaving them in the community for them to victimize people over and over again. Thank you for your time today. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for your time today. Uh, can you tell us your name and title? My name is Natalie Johnson Lee, and I will say I'm a Northside resident. And you want me to know what, where I work at? Uh, yeah. Okay. I am the vice president slash chief action taker of Girls in Action and I own my own business called Sisters in Power. Uh, what can you tell us about violence in Northside? 
Well, actually, I've been in the North Side for well over hmm, about 25 years, and um, I've seen it, uh, its ebb and flows. I live on 17th and Oliver, and um, one of the challenges is uh, with our youth is our youth don't have enough um, opportunities in order for them to um, spend their time, as well as um, we have uh, families that need resources and opportunities as well to create um, good, healthy families so that we don't have as much violence um, in our community. Uh, what is one thing you can commit to to help with violence in Northside? Well, um, commit to, I, I not necessarily commit to, it's something I do. So one is, is one, knowing my neighbors, uh, being able to recognize who in my neighborhood does not belong, or when I say doesn't belong, it means that they're not a community member and they may be loitering or hanging around for um, purposes that we don't know, um, mm -hmm. as well as um, I work with girls on a daily basis um, to help educate them about not only their future, but their personal power and how they can make an impact in their own community. So I think uh, if we all mentor um, a young person and take a young person up under our wings and begin to show them um, opportunities and um, different avenues in which they can pursue um, different um, access access points in their lives as, as, well, as well as education, um, post-secondary education, or even job and, and internship opportunities. I think that makes a big difference in our community every day um, and it actually curbs violence as well. Mm -hmm. uh, one last question. Okay. Uh, what is one thing you could recommend others to help with violence? Become a mentor. Become a mentor? Become a mentor. Become yeah. a mentor. Yeah. Mentorship is huge. Mentorship is huge. If you talk to most successful um, people, they all had a mentor, someone who took an interest in them uh, and began to show them um, a different way and different opportunities and help guide them through the process of life. Makes a big difference in a child's life. Okay. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for your time today. Uh, can you tell us your name and title? My name is Kimberly Caprini. I'm a community activist and Northside resident. Okay. Uh, what can you tell us about violence in Northside? Um, I can tell you that, in my opinion, um, I was asked this question two years ago um, at uh, National Night Out, actually. And at that time, I believe that uh, gun violence was a lot, um, the percentage of hearing guns going off was a lot higher. Um, just leaving this meeting um, this afternoon, I found that um, the gun violence has actually dropped to some degree, but not enough. We still have a huge issue of gun violence in our country, and when you speak specifically of North Minneapolis, um, we, we really need to recognize how important it is to get more kids involved in um, programs that they're interested in. Um, one of the things that I wished that had been brought up, the age groups that had been brought up today, was the 16 to 22 year old age group. I feel as if that, a that particular age group, specifically on the north side, um, does not have enough activities to do. Um, you know, they, they need jobs, um, they need to have a, a better sense of self-worth and um, just opportunities to be able to, uh, to strive and, and show um, and show what they're uh, able and capable to do. And, and for that to happen, we need to have um, the resources available from um, the city, the county, and um, our district um, to support some of those efforts to make sure that they keep busy, um, specifically between the hours of 5 and 9.30, Monday through Sunday. Okay, uh, what is one thing you could commit to to help with violence in Northside? Well, I think uh, one thing that for sure that I feel I've been committed to is living here on the north side. Um, I have grew up on the north side. I moved south side in my early 20s, came back to raise my family. My children attend Minneapolis Public Schools. Um, I think being committed to um, um, advocating for the schools that my children are in and the neighborhoods that I, I live in and um, is a big piece to, um, to making those steps towards being a part of changing the narrative. Uh, one last question. Uh, what is one thing you could recommend others to help with violence in Northside? Um, I guess I mean, you could, there's lots of things that I could recommend, but I think the one thing that I feel like is probably the most important that I try and do daily is 
I pay attention. I pay attention to my surroundings. Um, I don't assume that everyone is up to something um, bad and negligent. Um, I give eye contact to my neighbors. I, I shop on the north side. I live on the north side. And um, you know, when you spend your dollars in the areas that you live in, that um, allows the economy to grow. So um, I think that's a really big part of it. Is is just literally, be, if you if you're here, um, spend your dollars here, become a part of the community, and um, we'll go from there. Uh, thank you for your time. Dave. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank you for your time, Day. Uh, can you tell us your name and title? So my name is Fu Lee. I'm the state representative for House District 59A. Uh, what can you tell us about violence on the north side? You know, violence is a huge concern for a lot of our neighbors. That's probably one of the most important issues when I uh, meet with our neighbors. And so how could we work together to address some of these issues? And uh, like the conversation that we had today is around gun violence. How could we uh, start looking at that issue through a public health lens and, you know, start addressing some of the trauma that's associated with gun violence when uh, it's committed in our community or around our neighborhoods? Uh, what is one thing you could commit to to help with violence on the north side? So, you know, one thing that I could commit to is always connecting with my neighbors to see if we could find common solutions to address some of the issues. And uh, we know that there are different community organizations out there who are doing some of the work around gun violence prevention and, uh, you know, really working with them and s seeing how we can support some of the efforts that they're doing. And also, if they need help with anything, just connecting them to different groups or different kind of resources. Uh, one last question. Uh, what is one thing you could recommend others to help with violence in the North Side? You know, definitely uh, connecting with our community organizations who are working around violence or our elected officials so that, you know, we can hold them accountable. And if they're not, you know, being accountable to us, ask them why uh, they're not paying attention to what's going on in the community and to the uh, perspective of the different community members. Uh, thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your time today. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us your name and title? Yeah, my name is Joe Banks and I'm a candidate for Hennepin County Sheriff. Uh, what can you tell us about violence on the north side? Well, I mean, uh, there's a there's a definite need to uh, combat the violence on the north side. It's, it's in all communities, actually. I think primarily it is uh, youth-orientated violence that we're seeing because of lack of programming and uh, to, in place to really assist the youth with finding positive things to do. Uh, what is one thing you could commit to to help with violence in the North Side? I think um, one of the things I'm committed to is I, I, I do volunteer coach. Um, I'm trying to teach children life skills along with football skills um, and, and how to face challenges in life. We, we need to uh, really work hard at mentoring some of these kids, but also looking at the, the, the hard copy issues that they're dealing with at home and meeting on, on some of those challenges like uh, education, lack of food in the house, uh, just basic, you know, mentor men or women in the household. Uh, one last question. Mm -hmm. uh, what is thing, one thing you could recommend others to help with violence in Northside? Get involved. Get involved. I mean, we may not have the complete answer, but start somewhere. Get involved. Uh, thank you for your time, Day. All right. Thank you for your time, Day. Can you tell us your name and title? My name is Phyllis Sorrell. Uh, what can you tell us about violence on the north side? That I do not like it. Um, and I think that it may need to be addressed um, with children at a younger level. What I would like to do is write a proposal to the state of Minneapolis um, to stop the cycle of uh, children going to the penitentiary. Um, and there's a lot of criteria involved, a lot of fives. They'd have to at least be five years of age, um, school age. Their parent or parents must have a sentence or be sentenced to five or more years. And I would like to start an after-school program um, to start prevention of this because it does start in the homes, um, but a lot oftentimes in the inner city, the parent, the male parent, is missing from the homes, which causes um, problems because we need to police our children better, and we need help and assistance doing this. So I want to be able to do something to help. I do not like guns is why I'm here um, 
at this meeting. I'm very passionate about that. I have many, many nephews um, that used to bring maybe even water guns into my home, but I would stomp them to death and throw them <laughs> in the garbage can. Because uh, when I was five years old, uh, my father was shot uh, five times and stabbed three times. Um, and they said he was dead on arrival, but he lived because he was so strong. So I haven't liked guns since. And then uh, when my son was born, his father was killed um, by a gun. We didn't even live here. We came here because his grandfather was dying and he was killed two weeks later with a gun. So I do not care for guns. I know people um, use the guns to kill people, but if the gun weren't, guns weren't here in the first place, uh, it could help solve the problem. So I'm very passionate about this issue. Uh, what is one thing you could commit to to help with violence in Northside? Um, I would like to go into the schools and um, actually see where help is needed to see where I would be best used. So I'm, I'm here at this meeting to find out where I could be used and where um, people would benefit for what I have to offer the best before I say what I, because I'm willing to do almost anything to stop it, but I just want to be at the right place where what I know and what I can do would help instead of just talk. Okay, uh, one final question. Uh, what is one thing you could recommend others to help with violence in the North Side? F um, possibly find out what happened to the person that's carrying the gun to cause them to carry a gun or feel like they need to carry a gun because they weren't born a criminal. Uh, so what happened to them? Uh, even like um, the school shootings, um, there's always, uh, well, it seems to be that young people put a whole lot of things on social media. And what we have, what I have seen, um, all of these school shootings, something was on social media before the shooting actually happened. And I believe they need to take that more seriously. Um, and, and find out, and, and when they do find out before the shooting happens that this person has threatened or did something on social media, take, take the time to uh, talk to that individual and find out what happened to this person to make him feel this way and maybe try to correct that instead of being an after fact or you know, let's, let's be proactive instead of reactive. That's what I would like to see. Okay, uh, thank you for your time today. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for your time today. Can you tell us your name and title? Sure, my name is Sharon Berkeley and I work for the city of Minneapolis as a public health nurse it's in the school-based clinics. Uh, what is one thing you can tell us about violence on the north side? So I think the violence on the north side has become kind of out of control and I think um, the city of Minneapolis is working to try and get it back under control by we have um, promotions that we have going over north about stop the violence that we're working on to try and help decrease the violence in the city mm -hmm. of North Minneapolis. Uh, what is one thing you could commit to to help with the violence on North Side? Well, right now, we're today we're doing this girl symposium here in North Commons, and we also have Bridges to Manhood, which is going to be on Thursday downtown at the community college, um, and then there's going to be I think it's a rally on Saturday at the Capri Theater just to talk about how to stop the violence and more community togetherness that we can bring for the north side as a whole. Okay, uh, one last question. Uh, what is one thing you could recommend others to help with violence in the north side? I think the way to help violence in the north side is to work together as a community. I think if there was more community watch groups in the, on the, na in the neighborhoods like there used to be and people work together and communicate with each other, I think that would help the community a lot to build. It takes a village to raise kids. Okay, thank you for your time today. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your time today. Can you tell us your name? Yeah, my name is Sam Littler. Uh, what is one thing you could tell us about violence in the North Side? Um, it's something that I've personally experienced, and it's something that I have experienced on a regular basis as a resident of the North Side, um, and it, it sucks. Uh, what is one thing you could commit to to help with violence in the North Side? Um, I try to be active in the community and role model and I can definitely commit to maintaining safety in and around like my home and trying to like be as involved in the community to make a difference as I can. Uh, what is one thing you can recommend others to help with violence? 
I think we need more supports in our community. I think a lot of violence stems from um, a need. There's a need, there's a lot of people in this area that have food insecurity, housing insecurity, have lack of support systems, and I think if there were better services and better um, ways for people to get the help that they needed, that there would be less violence. Yeah, thank you for your time today. Mm -hmm. You're welcome, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you for your time today. Can you tell us your name? Um, I'm Tiffany Casey. Uh, what is one thing you can tell us about violence in the north side? Um, I grew up on the north side my whole life and I've always known violence has been an issue and it's a continual struggle and one thing I always look at at work too is like how that violence affects youth. So that's something we work with to make sure youth are engaged instead of um, like ending up in difficult situations and then also doing things where like I can like support youth to make better choices. Um, yeah, but it's been an ongoing problem for years. Uh, what is one thing you can't commit to to help with the violence in Northside? Mm, I think like a commitment I can make, so um, I work with children pretty regularly, is to um, always just be engaged with them and make sure that kids living on the north side have um, skills and resources to go to. So that could be a commitment to help end violence or prevent it. Okay, last question. Uh, what is one thing you could recommend others help with violence? Um, I always say recommend like talking to people, getting to know your neighbors, um, and developing a support system so when people do run into trouble, they have someone to go to. And if someone's like just having a difficult time, they have support there to help. Okay, thank you for your time today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, thank you for your time today. Can you tell us your name or title? Uh, I'm Marlene Schleter. I work for the Minneapolis Park Board's Team Teamworks program. I'm a youth employment specialist. Uh, what can you tell us about violence on the north side? Well, I don't know what I can tell you about violence on the north side. There's too much of it. There's, uh, we need to find avenues for youth. I don't think that there is enough places for youth to go. We have the parks and, and of course they're always welcome here at the parks, but youth need a lot more than that. They need variety. Um, youth are learning, their brains are expanding, they need to be able to try them out, test things out, so they need to have a variety of things to do. So while the parks can provide a computer lab, they can provide basketball, there's many different things that we do. We've got the, the swimming pools, they still need other things. They need actual structure with our computer labs. Other places have the type of information that they can get there. They need a skate park. They need a roller rink. They need a theater. They need places that they can go hang out. Uh, what is one thing you could commit to to help with violence in the north side? We work with teens and we are uh, we employ youth here in the north side. We are teen team works, so we work with youth who are 14 to 24. We hire them to work in our parks, on crews, in our computer labs, with special crews. We also have our Earn While You Learn component where youth can gain educational experiences. So that is our work readiness training, personal development, professional development. We also offer practice tests for the ACT's National Career Readiness Credential. And that's a three hour test that we can do and we can help the youth with. And that is something that shows how work ready they are. Employers look at that to see, are you ready for this job? Do you have the experience that you need for it? So those are the types of things that we work with in my department is youth employment and getting them ready. Okay, uh, final question. Uh, what is one thing you could recommend others to help with violence? Communication. Communication is big and it can't just be solo. You need to include the whole family. It, it's a, in order to reduce violence, you have to have the buy-in from everybody, from the community, from the employers, from their families. It's, it's a community event. It's a community thing. Okay, thank you for your time today. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, can you tell us your name and title? Uh, Thomas Barker. I'm a coach at Pure Quality Boxing Gym. Uh, what can you tell us about violence on the north side? Um, it, it fluctuates. It goes up and down. Um, what I've seen for the last three years has been um, kind of horrific, though. You know what I mean? When it is, um, when it happens, it's horrific. Um, it's unnecessary, mostly. 
um, I think that um, you know we can battle it. It just uh, I think a lot of parents and a lot of the community need to stand up to it. That's all. You know? So I mean, but it's it's been bad. Okay. Uh, what is one thing you could commit to to help with violence in the north side? Uh, what, what I've been doing is uh, taking the kids off the street, putting them in boxing, um, giving them mentoring. Um, I'm just taking time so they can see their future. You know what I mean? Uh, sometimes they just need a little moment um, to breathe, you know, get away from the distractions, and then, you know, what's their goals, what they want to do. You know what I mean? So sometimes you have to ask. Uh, a lot of people assume uh, they need to do this. Sometimes they got on their mind what they want. You know what I mean? So sometimes you just have to ask and open them up. Okay, uh, finally, uh, what is one thing you could recommend others to help with violence? Um, to spread the word, you know. Um, my main thing is spread the word. If everybody on the same page, you know, we can sit at the table. I think it's just got to be more um, conflict resolution. It's got to be more mediation. It's got to be someone that you trust that you can go to to mediate, you know what I mean, for you. Because sometimes you can't handle it by yourself, so you just find someone, um, um, an adult or someone that you trust that's more on... Um, helping you out of that situation, you know what I mean? So sometimes you just have to share what's going on in your life so they can help you, so, you know, that's mainly, that's all I got. Thank you for your time, Day. Yep. Uh, thank you for your time, Day. Can you tell us your name and title? My name is Kyla Roy, and at the moment, I'm being trained to coach for boxing with Thomas. Uh, what, is, what is one thing you can tell us about violence on the north side? Violence on the north side, I could say that is very, what's the word, frequent. It's very frequent, and I feel like it's that frequent because, like, people, a lot of people don't know how to, like, use their words or, like, okay, uh, some don't somewhere. understand some, so they retort to violence really fast. So I just think that's what happens really frequently. Uh, what is one thing you commit to to help with violence in the north side? Um, basically what Thomas just said, spread the word, which is what I'm doing now with the boxing. Because boxing, it really helps to get, like, your anger out there. And then instead of, like, killing people or taking your harm out on anybody else, you could get in the gloves. And then I like to try to help people and then to inspire them because a lot of people, they don't have confidence in themselves and that would, that's what be the problem is they don't have a lot of confidence in themselves. So I like to like help people get through what they need to. Uh, final question, what is one thing you could recommend others to help with violence? Get in the gloves. It say get in the gloves because that's the best way out. It's a lot of opportunities. Like Coach Thomas, He's helping us get jobs and stuff. Like, I'm already working, but it's more opportunity and working and other jobs. And then with boxing, you can take that a long way. You can take it to a championship or you can coach. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for your time today. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your time today. Can you tell us your name and title? Uh, my name is Jasmine Randall, and we say by title, meaning like... Like an organization or like... Well, I guess I do work. I work as a park, park patrol agent with the um, Minneapolis Park Police. Uh, what can you tell us about violence on the north side? Um, well, I guess just with violence on the north side, um, I guess it mainly kind of pertains to um, the youth, um, obviously. Uh, and I guess they're kind of the ones, from what I understand, they are the ones kind of uh, starting the violence or maybe being influenced by possibly like the older generation to um, you know, commit um, crimes. So, uh, uh, what is one thing you commit to to help with violence in the north side? Um, I think one thing that um, I think we can all do collectively to kind of prevent the violence over the north side is, I think, provide more, it's a better word, I guess, more visuals, more hope for the youth. Because um, from what I understand is, youth or just people in general only know what they're exposed to. So if they're exposed to violence, all they know is violence. So. Um, if we can provide them, you know, um, hope for a better future, uh, more positivity, and just more people who can be influential, positively <laughs> influential in their life, then I think that will probably um, help prevent or um, decrease, um, you know, violence within the community. Okay, uh, final question. Uh, what is one thing you could recommend others to help with violence? One thing I could recommend others is um, I think 
do whatever you can uh, to get involved with the youth because, like I said, they are they are our future. And um, the only way to kind of help create a better future is for us um, as who are more, uh, what's the word? Since we're more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> we know more so we can provide them with things to uh, kind of a path that they can go to that will help them in the future, positive future, so yeah. Okay, thank you for your time, Dave. <laughs> thank you. Uh, can you tell us your name and title? Uh, my name is Yolanda Wilkes. I'm an officer with Minneapolis Police Department. Uh, what is one thing you could tell us about violence in the North Side? Well, I could say that the violence on the North Side has increased, but I also think that there are a lot of different programs out here that are aimed at um, de-escalation and the decrease of the violence on our side. Uh, what is one thing you could commit to to help with violence in the North side? I think one thing that not only myself can commit to, but you know, all of us as a community, a uh, law enforcement agency, no matter what your title or position is, I think the one thing we can do is reach out more, listen more to the youth, um, become partners with them, um, become more involved, and just kind of come together in building that uh, community relation and that trust and, and putting back putting in, putting the trust back into the community where it once was and know that uh, law enforcement um, as officers we are the community and the community they are us uh, final question uh, what is one thing you could recommend others to help with violence say it one more time what is one thing you could recommend others to help with violence or like violence prevention I would recommend that we all uh, take the necessary steps um, to building those key relationships and partnerships within the community um, with our youth, um, getting out there, participating in, in various events such as uh, coming to like North Commons at an event like this where there are kids here in, being an influential um, personnel in their life, mm -hmm. someone that they can look up to, someone they can reach out to if they need help be there to answer questions and point them in the right direction. So, Okay, thank you for your time today. Thanks. Uh, thank you for your time, Dave. Can you tell us your name and title? Yeah, my name is Ashley, and I am a community activist here with my mother, Kelly Hardiman, that works for the Park and Recreation Board. Uh, what can you tell us about violence on the north side? Violence on the north side it has been going on since I've been a child. I'm 28 years old. Um, honestly, it, it it's gotten to the point where you get so numb, and it, it shouldn't be numb to you, you know? I used to cry about it, but now I'm just like, it. when it happens, it's just like, you know, it's just like a old well type of thing, and that shouldn't, it's not human. So. Okay. Uh, what is one thing you could commit to to help with violence prevention? I'm just really pushing to, you know, get the kids in the community and, you know, get them in activities and get their mind off of things like that and um, and make them understand that taking a life you know, is it really worth it? Is it, what do you get from out of it, mm -hmm. you know? So. Okay, uh, final question. Uh, what is one thing you could recommend others to help with violence prevention? Just keep speaking up about it, you know, and making them understand that it's wrong. Simple as that. You know, you can't do so much, you know. You know, you don't know where the guns are coming from. That's like the number one question, you know. But all you can do is keep speaking up and keep saying it's not worth it. It's really not. That's it. Okay, thank you for your time today. You're welcome. Okay, uh, thank you for your time today. No uh, problem, no problem. Uh, can you tell us your name and title? My name is Paris Johnson. I am a youth employment counselor at Eastside Neighborhood Services, Northeast. Okay. Uh, what can you tell us about violence in the North Side? Um, I mean, it's a lot of it. It's a... Uh, uh, um, since I moved, I've been up here probably like 15 or 16 years, and it's been pretty bad the last 10 years. It's been really intense. So, um, uh, and it's something that's actually you know, happened more frequently, um, and, and it needs rapid change. I believe. Yeah. Uh, what is one thing you could commit to to help with violence in North South? One thing I can I could commit to, mm -hmm. um, just keep doing what I'm doing, man. Trying to um, help. Uh, young adults um, tap into their potential when it comes to uh, 
academics and employment, um, trying to you know get young adults uh, work experience so they could be successful in the workplace. I mean, to give them another outlet than you know the streets. So, okay, uh, final question: uh, What is one thing you could recommend to others to help with violence prevention? Um, everybody hold each other accountable. Uh, less gun access, but also. Um, Having more activities, rather it's out of school or during school for out of school youth, where well, they can be involved with, so they don't have the results of actually the streets. So you know, um, yeah, just actually just having more programs that help support our youth, and that's um, even youth that you know have um, uh, legal barriers. Um, uh, just kind of helping programs for them, kind of helping them get out that situation where they don't have the results of you know um, getting that in the in the streets. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you for your time today. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you for your time today. Yes, good morning. Uh, can you tell us your name and title? Sure, I'm Jen White and I'm Senior Policy Advisor to Mayor Fry. I handle public safety um, and youth and family development. Uh, what can you tell us about violence in the North Side? Um, well, I've been working on the North Side for a little over five years um, specifically and I think that um, there are a lot of really good things happening. Um, and the violence that is persistent is kind of like a smaller group of people, but it moves around so much and it affects so many people. Just over a year. Okay, uh, what is one thing you could commit to to help with violence in the North Side? Um, well, I know in our office we're committed to looking at um, all aspects of public safety. Um, so not only from a law enforcement perspective, but also a public health perspective um, and exploring different ways that the community can be involved in um, collaborative public safety strategies. Um, so we're, we're really trying to look at this um, as a multi-dimensional, um, holistic approach to dealing with not only the actual violence, but the undercurrents of the violence, like the root causes, um, access to um, affordable housing, jobs, um, and even like activities, like for people to do, youth to do, be involved in, things like that. Um, and I think that we have a really good opportunity um, to continue to build on public trust with our chief, Arredondo, um, who's really um, trying to be more transparent and look at the issue from you know many different perspectives. Okay, uh, final question. Uh, what is one thing you could recommend others to help with violence prevention? Um, I think really just sharing information um, about resources that are out there um, and also you know when things happen to um, um, make sure that you can share what you may know um, with people who are there to help um, and not necessarily just the police, but there are other initiatives such as a group violence intervention um, that Sasha Cotton is heading up from our health department. Um, so those different kind of ways to share information that there are resources available um, for people and um, ways to kind of just plug in. Okay, thank you for your time today. Yes, thank you, Cameron. Okay, uh, thank you for your time today. Yeah, no problem. Uh, can you tell us your name and title? My name is Jewel Davis. I'm a sexual health navigator for um, the program called POSH through Pillsbury Communities. Okay, uh, what, can, what can you tell us about violence on the North Side? Um, I feel like violence on the North Side has been getting out of hand lately and it needs to be controlled and tamed somehow. Uh, what is one thing you can commit to to help with violence in the north side? Just keep reaching out to my community um, and stay positive. <laughs> okay, uh, last question. Uh, what is one thing you recommend others to help with violence prevention? Stay, stay positive and put the guns down. Okay, thank you for your time today. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you for your time today. Uh, can you tell us your name and title? Yep, I'm Amy Shanafelt work at the University of Minnesota in the Department of Family Medicine as a research project manager. Uh, what can you tell us about violence on the north side? So I do a lot of work there. I've been to the Urban Research Outreach and Engagement Center quite a bit. I used to have an office there. Um, we are currently working with the Minneapolis Urban League a lot with the project that I'm coordinating right now. Um, and so um, I've been out in the north side a lot. I go to the Hawthorne Huddle at, um, 
Farview Park. And I guess um, what I'm getting at is that I've never experienced any violence on the north side. And I know that um, it can be an issue for folks that live there. Um, but someone who's visited, I've just always felt it's very warm and welcoming place with a lot of really wonderful people. Okay, uh, what is one thing you could commit to to help with violence on the north side? Um, so I think that I can commit to continuing to um, go there and be there and get to know people, um, do my best in terms of my work with um, building community and providing connections to the university that might be resources for folks, um, and just being a good steward of um, community engagement and friendliness and um, connecting with folks. Okay, a final question. Uh, what is one thing you could recommend others to help with violence prevention? I think that um, helping communities sort of build on their own and, and start their own initiatives and work from the ground up, um, more grassroots solutions I think are much more powerful and helping um, provide resources for communities to do that um, in their own way is the most important um, policy in my opinion. Okay, thank you for your time today. Thank you. My name is Coral Garner and I'm the Division Director for Allison Health and Youth Development with the City of Minneapolis Health Department. And the Minneapolis Call for Action to Prevent Youth Violence is one of our health department initiatives. Uh, well, what do you think about violence in North Carolina? Well, I think that um, it is a concern. Uh, I think things have improved somewhat but there's still more that we can do as a, a community to mitigate some of the violence that goes on. Okay, uh, well, what, what is one thing you could commit to to help with violence in Northside? Well, I think our department has always been committed to addressing youth violence. We've been doing this work now for uh, almost 12 years. Um, and. I mean, it's a slow process, and I think it's a slow process because there, there are many factors that attribute to violence um, in terms of uh, community conditions as well as um, probably the city's responsibility in not providing um, uh, adequate resources. And so, it, so it's, it's not, I mean, you can't just point to one specific thing that that causes violence. You can look at lack of uh, lack of employment. You can look at uh, lack of stable housing, um, lack of uh, community cohesion. I mean, all of those things uh, contribute to it. And so, it really is. It takes a collective effort to address it. So, I think our role, although small in terms of just raising awareness about the issues, because it's not just Northside. I mean, there, there are issues with um, youth violence in pockets all over our city. Um, and so it takes a city commitment, it takes a community commitment, um, it takes a commitment from businesses and faith-based community to really be invested in um, putting resources into various areas around Minneapolis because there are some areas in Minneapolis that have a lot of resources and then there's some areas in Minneapolis that don't. So. Okay, uh, final question. Uh, what is one thing you could recommend to others to help with violence prevention? I think um, as it relates to youth, I think it's rather than shaming youth, or um, complaining about our youth is really being committed to helping our youth. It's also being committed to demanding, especially of our educational system, that, uh, that we have quality education and we create uh, environments that are welcoming for all youth so that they feel that they have a place and that they belong. Um, so whether it's in schools or uh, recreation centers or um, just neighbors being civil to, to neighbors or if you see a mom with uh, several kids and working two jobs, you know, what can you do to support that family? Um, I think those are all things that we can do to help address your balance. Okay, thank you for your time today. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for your time today.
Uh, can you tell us your name and title? My name is Neem Certified a Medical Assistant. Uh, what can you tell us about violence on the north side? Well, as I was growing up, I grew up pretty much in the south side of Minneapolis. But all I hear and all I know about it's just like, oh my gosh, if you go to the north side, you're, gonna not, kinda come, you're not going to come out alive, you're going to get shoot. Mm -hmm. That's what I hear. Uh, well, what is one thing you can commit to to help with violence in the north side? It's a lot of bit more engagement, education, more of like understanding and peace for each other. It's more trying to understand and learn from each other instead of just like we are we and you are you, but more of a community. Uh, what is one thing you could recommend to help with uh, violence prevention? Education, understanding each other's culture, backgrounds, ethnicity, and stuff like that. And I know that sometimes you look at a different culture and stuff like that, and you think that they're more violent than you are. So understanding each other. Okay, thank you for your time, Day. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Day. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us your name and title? Um, so my name is Jim Fields. Um, my title? Okay, I, I get caught this. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, what can you tell us about violence in North Minneapolis? So, violence in North Minneapolis, that's actually, um, it's an interesting topic because um, usually every once in a while we get like these ideas, like, you know, police brutality or like, you know, um, it, it's mainly like aimed towards minorities, you know, I feel like it's mainly aimed towards it. Um, a lot of it consists of like, you know, um, this idea of like race and basically, you know, it's about like everybody having like their own cliques and stuff, you know, like for example, a lot of people are saying like, it happens in like the black communities, but then it also happens among communities too, and it, um, it happens in a lot of like the um, the communities that are here in North Minneapolis. Um, usually, what happens is that when we when we <laughs> sorry, I got nervous. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh. Hey. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Cool. Okay. Please do. All right. So. All right. Cool. Yeah. So usually, what happens in um, in North Minneapolis is that um, we hear a lot of these um, these um, I, these acts of um, violence that are happening, and it's usually happening with the youth. And I see that a lot too. About um, if you ever go to like high school or if you ever look into colleges and stuff, it's usually happening to um, this generation that's coming up, and that's that's basically what you know happening. You know. Uh, what is one thing you can commit to to help with violence on the north side? Um, education is one of the things that we can do. Because usually with education, um, we have to go and educate others too as well. And um, once we start educating, like especially the youth, then that will help with the generation that's coming up. Uh, we should tell them you know, what it is, like what, what violence is. and specifically either through like domestic abuse or through like actual bullying or through like gang violence we have to educate them on that and once we start educating on that they'll have a better understanding of what to do and what not to do so I think for me personally um, it I usually talk to my youth at church or um, the kids that I see every once in a while that I graduated like at the high school you know every time when I see them I always try to talk to them or like some friends that I see you know just any way possible I try to talk to them. Um, there's a lot of like after school programs that talk about this too so I think you know going there will help as well. Well final question what is what thing you can recommend others to help with violence prevention? Um, yeah going back to that um, I feel like if they use their their sources and uh, education then they'll have like a better understanding on like what like to do when they encounter violence or how to prevent it. Also, if they are um, part of the violence, I feel like they can sort of take that, um, take their time and take their energy into recreational use, like either in after school activities or in sports or through like actual arts. You know, I feel like that helps more than breaking down the community. Okay, thank you for your time today. Yeah, no problem, thank you. Okay, well, thank you for your time today. Can you tell us your name and title? Andrea Devora. I'm a mom and I'm a server and I'm a concerned citizen of Minneapolis. Okay, what can you tell us about violence in North Minneapolis? 
Well, um, I grew up on the north side, and then I left, and I'm back now living as an adult. Um, and sadly, it hasn't changed. Um, it's only increased. Um, and I see uh, people that I knew that I grew up with, their family homes destroyed. Um, and there's been real no support for the citizens um, or the communities of North Minneapolis. Um, for me, as an adult now, being back in the city, um, it's concerning. Uh, it really is concerning that nobody has taken up um, for some of the communities who don't have a voice, who don't have a seat at the table where politics and uh, socioeconomic uh, issues are concerned. Uh, what is one thing you could commit to to help with violence in North Minneapolis? For me, I've been on a tear uh, since day one as a mom of a black child um, and also a special needs black child. Um, my commitment is to make sure that the police force uh, stops murdering our brothers and sisters of color um, and gets retrained um, to deal with special needs uh, individuals, but also recognizing that they have um, they have a responsibility to the community to be retrained in de-escalation situations and also uh, to be active in the communities that they patrol. Um, so for me that's what I commit to um, as a citizen and as a mom is making sure that our police and our city authorities are held accountable. Okay, uh, final question. Mm -hmm. uh, what is one thing you could recommend others to help in violence prevention? Honestly, don't be an asshole. I live by that. <laughs> Um, I think that if you follow that basic kind of core sentence in every walk of life, I think that if you approach it from that standpoint, um, and our speaker was very clear today, you have to love yourself before you can love anybody else. So if you approach any issue that you have as an adult and as a community member with that preface, I think you'll be okay. I think that's what we need. Um, a lot of people don't approach life like that, and I think that's what's missing. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, thank you for your time today. <laughs> no problem. Okay, uh, thank you for your time today. You're welcome. Uh, can you tell us your name and title? My name is Robert. Uh, my title here is uh, student at MCTC as well as uh, mentor for Restoration Incorporated. Okay, what can you tell us about violence on the north side? Well, you know, it has been a problem for a while. And I believe what we're trying to do here is bring together communities because it's not just North Minneapolis, but it's South Minneapolis, Brooklyn Park, Brooklyn Center. It's all over where we're having the violence. And I believe this, this conference, this forum today is bringing that all together across those boundaries of city, cultures, uh, and whatnot. And I think that's uh, what today is all about. Uh, what is one thing you could commit to to help with violence in Northside? What I can commit to is to continue to work with that community in the capacity in which I am, which is a mentor, and mentoring and, and helping these young men to see that there is hope, you know, that there is an alternative to violence, that there is greatness in them, but we all need help in unlocking it in each other. And so that's what uh, my piece is, is to, to be a repairer of the breach, if you will. Yeah. Okay, uh, final question. Uh, well, was it? You could recommend. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, what would you recommend others to help with violence in the North Side or violence prevention? You know, if you're someone who is working in a professional capacity and you have time to give of yourself to helping youth to helping you know organizations out there that are helping youth bring that in bring your time i think our time you know that we you know make a living with and all of that should be brought to these circles to help you know with this problem so if anything i would think that would be something that is truly necessary is people bringing their talents and gifts into this this space and for these reasons yeah. okay thank you for your time today yeah